Hello everybody, my name is Anna and today I will be talking to you about my journey as a web developer so far and the mistakes, mistakes I felt like I've made and perhaps how you can benefit from learning from my mistakes and some possible solutions that I have for that. First, I'd like to start telling you a little bit about myself. I don't have a tech a technical background at all. I studied photography. I never thought that I would enjoy coding or be interested in it because I always saw it as something very technical and very intimidating. Um, however, about a year ago, I had a lot of free time in my hands and I wanted to create a schedule for myself and start studying something at home. I started Code Academy and it was very straightforward. I wasn't intimidated at all. I went through HTML pretty quickly, I went through CSS pretty quickly, and I started the uh, web development path. I just set a little bit of time aside every day and started practicing little by little until I got to JavaScript and then I finished JavaScript and now I am learning React. So the very first mistake that I feel like I that I made in this journey. I made Code Academy the only place where I would learn from and get all of my information from. But now that I step outside of Code Academy, I realize that Code Academy really holds your hand the whole time, which is great for a beginner. It's great to start and not feel intimidated by code, which can be a reason enough to stop you from doing it. At some point, and I didn't realize this when this happened, it became my comfort zone. It's not really a challenge. It, it never makes you think. If you ever get stuck, there's a button that will give you the solution right down there. And I know a lot of us won't look at the solution because a lot of us like really want to try and solve it for ourselves. But at the end of the day, it is a very, beginner friendly site. You don't learn to think like a programmer. You don't learn the everyday struggles that you are going to go through um, at your job as a web developer. If I could go back and do it again, I would uh, divide my time between doing Code Academy and also solving algorithm problems outside of Code Academy and watching video tutorials. And that brings me to the solution to this problem. If you are currently doing this or if you are just getting started in this journey, I suggest that you definitely, I suggest, it's a suggestion, that you start with Code Academy. Again, it's a great place to start. They'll hold your hand. They'll explain concepts that are somewhat hard to understand in very simple terms. You don't feel intimidated. You feel like you can do this, you can learn. I would suggest to divide your time between doing Code Academy and solving problems outside of Code Academy. Code Wars, uh, I learned about this website last week. It's a great place to uh, solve algorithms. I've also been watching a lot of YouTube videos. Traversy Media has, I believe, two or three videos that are called JavaScript Cardio. So he'll go through the solutions to each one of those problems, but he also has a file on GitHub that you can download and try to solve the algorithm the algorithms before you see the solution in his video. So I definitely suggest doing that at the same time that you're learning to code on Code Academy or free coding. The second mistake was letting fear stop me from doing things. Whenever I would encounter something that was too hard to understand, whenever a thought of can I really do this crossed my mind, um, I would stop coding. I got to the point where I didn't code at all for three months and I really missed it, but there was something within me that just didn't allow me to move forward and it was fear. It's hard to recognize that because your brain wants to make those fears rational. Your, your brain wants to rationalize why you can't do it or why it, it will take too long, it will be too hard to get to where you want to be. It's like when you work out, your brain wants to give up before your body. If you're running or if you're doing cardio, your brain will get tired and wants you to stop before your body is even tired. So it's the same thing, you just have to fight that fear of not moving forward. There are things that are going to be really hard to understand and, and solve and 
get past, but it's not impossible. Take a step back from things sometimes, right? From, from some problems or sometimes when concepts are too hard to understand, you have to take a step back, let your brain breathe for a moment and then get back to it. It's okay to take breaks. It's normal to doubt yourself. It's normal to, to think if this is really for you or if you can really do this. Um, but don't let fear stop you from getting to your dreams. You will never know what it's like or if you are actually capable unless you try. Point number three was uh, people telling me that I wasn't able to do it. And I don't mean like people that I actually know in my life because I happen to be very lucky and have people who are very supportive in my life. Like, I watched a few YouTube videos that talk about why um, it's really hard for women to have a career in tech because it's really hard to balance um, your personal life and your family with your work life, which kind of ties with uh, the fear I was talking about earlier. I am personally not in tech at the moment. I am trying to uh, start a career as a web developer, so I don't know this for a fact. And I want to say that a career in tech is very demanding and it's probably uh, challenging to uh, find a good work-life balance, but that shouldn't stop you because you are not there yet. These are these people's experiences and how they went through it and what they think it's like for a woman to have a career in tech. It's not your life and your career in tech just yet. Allow yourself to get there first and then decide if that is how you feel about it. And if that's the case, then you will deal with it when you get there. Don't allow these thoughts of what if it's too hard? What if I put in all this effort and then I don't enjoy it when I'm there? You won't know that until you're there. I guess a lot of these uh, mistakes are just mental walls that I had to get past in order to be able to keep learning. Web development is something so hard that takes so long to learn because it's easy for my brain to create these excuses as to why I shouldn't keep going. You have a path that you have set up for yourself, right? Like I'm going to learn HTML, I'm going to learn CSS, I'm going to learn JavaScript, and then I'm going to specialize in, for example, I specialize, I want to specialize in React. I am learning React. Um, so follow that path that you have traced for yourself. Just keep going and give yourself time, give yourself patience, but don't let yourself be stopped by fear. If you have traced yourself this uh, journey that you want to start, stay true to your journey, stay faithful to your journey and just keep going. Something that really helped me with motivation and, and support was joining meetups. There are tons of meetups on web development. There's tons of people that you can meet that are also starting in this journey with you, that um, perhaps already got a job and they can mentor you. Just going out there and spending a few hours with people that are in the same boat as you, that are just struggling with it and trying to, to become something. It's very inspiring. It makes you feel like you're not alone, that other people also go through this. It's also a good excuse to get out of the house because uh, sometimes when you're studying, you just spend a lot of time at home in front of the computer. The fourth roadblock that I want to touch on is having obligations such as work or family um, at the same time that you have to study. I do have a job. I work at a restaurant. The problem with sometimes studying all day and then having to work is not how physically tired you are, but how mentally exhausted you can become to then having to get ready and go to work. Um, so I know that a lot of people have nine to five jobs and then they also study web development at home. The suggestion that I would have for that is creating a schedule for yourself and sticking with it. For example, for me, it works that I wake up at the same time every day it doesn't matter if I have to go to work, it doesn't matter if I don't have to go to work. It basically, I take it as if I'm going to work. By 9 a.m., I am sitting in front of the computer coding. 
either uh, working on my app or solving an algorithm or even watching YouTube videos, whatever it is, at 9 a.m. I am sat in front of my computer studying. Um, so this really helps you gain momentum. It really helps you get into the groove of uh, just creating a schedule for yourself and doing it every single day. It just fits in your day better because now your brain is starting to get used to waking up every day at 7 or 8. By 9 you're studying. Uh, 12 you're having lunch and you take a little break and then by 5 you have to go to work or if you work in the morning you know you come back home by 6 or 7 you give yourself an hour to unwind and take a shower eat whatever it is that you do and then by 8 to 10 p.m. or to 11 p.m. you study every single day just set time aside as if it was another responsibility another a second job at first it takes a lot of willpower and commitment but after a few weeks your your body and your routine will get will start adjusting to this new schedule for yourself it really helps to practice coding every single day it stays fresh on your mind you can just pick up from where you left off yesterday or two days ago and not having to uh, you know, do a refresh because you haven't done it in a few weeks. The fifth and last point I want to touch on is um, something that I do about everything that I try to accomplish. It's just wanting to get it over with, wanting to get it done now. That's not going to happen now. And if you're just starting, it's probably going to take a little bit because there is just so much information to take in. There's so much to learn. There is so much practice that you have to have a certain amount of hours that you need to put in before you can really become good at this and start applying to jobs. It takes time to learn all of this and sometimes I just want things to happen now. It's not going to be like that. It's been a year and I'm still learning a lot. So my suggestion to other people who feel like me is to learn to be patient. I still tell myself this. I've gotten a little bit better at it, but I'm still very impatient. Just learn to enjoy the journey. Just know that this is something that is going to take a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Just know that you're going to feel really proud of yourself once you get there, but it does take a lot of effort. Allow yourself to enjoy the time that you spend studying. Enjoy not knowing how to do something. It's a journey that you can enjoy. It's a journey that you can be at peace with. I think that if we give ourselves time and just really be at peace with the fact that you still have to learn and that we're new at this, it's going to make it a much enjoyable experience. Um, and it's going to feel really rewarding once you're there. Those are the five mistakes or roadblocks that I wanted to touch on today. Um, I really hope this has helped you. I'm going to leave any resources or any links down in the description so you are also able to access them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing and I will see you next time. Bye!